If you think about any of the kind of products which you use every day, you can imagine how you're sending data to them and maybe getting data back. Lots of the products which you use are actually just APIs. APIs can send and receive data to different functions which they handle. So you might have something like shopping application and a user can post their attributes or their updated basket to that API, or they can get their wish list, or they can get all the products on the store, those kind of things. And you might have an API where you post your location and you get sent a car. You might have an API where you make a get request and get recommendations of what movie to watch. All those things can be APIs. So you can imagine that fast API makes it very easy for us to define how to send data to an API and get a response. There's three ways that you can get data into your API endpoints with fast API. You can send them as a query string, you can send them as part of the path itself, or you can send the data as a request body. So let's go through those now. So right here, I've got like a store API. I've got a bunch of products and I'm going to define one method here slash products, which gets me all the products in the store. So if I wanted to make a request to that, I'd make it to slash products and it's going to be a get request as defined by that decorator there. But let's say inside here, I want to filter by a particular category. Now I need to send that data of which category I want to the API. And the first way to do that is, like I said, in a query string. So query string follows the path, question mark, query string parameter name, category, equal to query string parameter value, which I'm going to say is cameras. That's the category that which I want to search for. So somehow this is going to appear in this endpoint. The way you specify this parameter is in the handler function definition arguments. So specify the name there. And fast API is going to look for the names of the query strings sent to this endpoint and the names of the arguments which are defined for the handler. If there's a match, well, then it's going to take the value from the query string and use that as the value of the parameter here. So now if inside this method, I print the category and then I make that request, you'll see that it prints cameras. So that's one way I can get data into my API as part of the query string there. I can do that for many different query string parameters at once as well. And of course, to make use of all of fast API's useful features, I should type these parameters. So category is gonna be a string and min price is gonna be a float. Then I get useful things like data conversion and data validation. So if I were to pass in something which isn't easily converted to a float, and then run this, it's going to get to tell me an error. It says the min price is not a valid float. Nice. The next way that I'll show you how to get data into your API endpoints is as part of the path itself. So where we had slash products, you could have slash products slash product ID. And that product ID could be a variable which is going to change based on which product you want. And that can be received inside the handler. So let me show you how to do that now. So when fast API sees a match between a name in braces in the path and a name of a argument defined in the handler, then it's going to take the value which is in this position in the path and assign it to the value of the parameter, which then you can use inside this handler. So if I print product ID here, so if I put product ID there and then make a request to products slash, let's say 452 is the product ID over here. And I will forget all those query strings in this new request. Make that request and then it prints 452. And of course I should apply the type here as well. So that's the second way of getting data into your fast API endpoints. First was as a query string, second as a path parameter. For all of these ways that I'm gonna show, you can assign default arguments too. So if you don't pass something in, it's gonna take on that value. So I could say the min price here, for example, could be zero. And then if I don't pass in the min price, if I run that, then you'll see that the min price has been set to the default value. It might be the case where one of your parameters doesn't need a default value. For example, if I actually implement this category filter,
then what about the case where I don't pass in a category? In that case, I don't need a default category. I'd probably want to have a behavior where if I don't pass in a category at all, it just gives me all of the items. So the recommended way to do that in FastAPI is to set the default to none and then fix the conflict between the type string being default to none by letting the category be a string or none type. The way to do that is to from typing import union and then use union like this to specify the category can be a string or none. So that square bracket syntax can be used with union that says this category is either a string or none. So by default, it's going to be set to none and otherwise the user can pass in a string and then it's going to be used. And then I might implement something like this. Now, if I make a request with the query string, I get back just the cameras. And if I remove that query string, then I get back everything. The third and final way that I'll show how to send data into your API is by sending it in the request body. So for example, I might have a user endpoint, which a user can make a post request to. And in that case, they're going to send a dictionary of some of their user attributes. And if you want to send a request body with a post request, then you can specify that with using the data keyword argument. So here I'm going to have a dictionary of user attributes. I'm going to define an endpoint in my API to handle post requests to the slash user endpoint. So you guess that the user parameter is going to be passed in as the parameters for the handler function definition. But if we do that, then by default, FastAPI is going to expect it to be found as a query string parameter, whereas in our case, it's being sent as the request body. The way that FastAPI determines whether data should be found as a request body rather than a query string parameter is by using its type. If that type inherits from a particular class, which I'll show you, then FastAPI looks for that data not as a query string parameter, but looks for it in the request body. So I'm going to specify that the user is of a type user with a capital U, which I'm going to define. I'll define that up here as a class. and specify the type of its attributes. And if you don't know, this syntax is just the same as defining the attributes for any instance of this class in the initializer. But like this, FastAPI is still gonna expect it to be found as a query string parameter. What we need to do is specify this type as inheriting from a special class. And that class is from Pydantic import base model. Then I'm going to make this class inherit from base model. And when FastAPI looks at the parameters, it's going to say, are any of these types a type which inherits from base model? If they are, then I should look for this parameter not as a query string, but as part of the request body. Now, if I try and make this request, let's see what happens. I get an issue, it's a strange one. It says the value for the body is not a valid dictionary. The reason why this is happening is because I haven't serialized my dictionary into a string. So I should do json.dumps over here to turn that dictionary into a string when it's sent over. Now, if I make this request, I get a none 200 code over here and it prints the user which says preferred name, Harry. And if I didn't send that data, then FastAPI would give me its usual helpful error messages. So that's how you get data into your APIs. You can send it as a query string parameter, you can send it as part of the path itself, as a path parameter, or you can send it as a request body.